title fight between Suk Mon Kong, that legendary fighter from Thailand, here today to fight against the Holland challenger, Ubuda. Well, tell us, Super Robert, how good do you consider Suk Mon Kong to be? Well, he's one of the best boxers ever in the history of Thailand. He's up there among the greats like Samat Payakarun. He's held more titles than most boxers, uh, from 141 pounds right up to 154 pounds. He's held nearly every title he's fought for. And he's one of the most feared Thai boxers in the world as well. There's Suk Bon Kong showing his great tenacity. He can take a lot of punishment too. And as well as that, he inflicts quite a bit as well. There he is, Suk Bon Kong, winning one of his mini fights against foreigners. And of course, against the great Thai fighters himself, he's also proved himself to be very good. In fact, here he just took the title off Danny Bill. Well, Danny Bill, of course, one of those fighters from France, come out here, proved himself, and uh, but not quite good enough to beat Suk Bon Kong. Here's Billy Ubeda from Holland, the former Chakaliki champion. And he has a real tough assignment here today against Suk Mon Kon. Well, there's Suk Mon Kong performing the Waikou Ra Mui. Tell us, Sifu, about this ritual of Muay Thai. Well, the Waikou plays a very important part in Muay Thai as it's showing respect to the teacher and the founders of the, the sport and also respect to the heritage of Thailand and their religion. Well, Suk Mon Kon finishes his uh, Waikou Ra Mui ritual that some say goes back more than 2,000 years. The referee now bringing both fighters into the centre ring to give his final instruction before five rounds of Muay Thai gets underway. Ubeda, well, he's a little unknown in Thailand, although the reputation in Europe says that he is up to the first class standards of Muay Thai. But let's see how he goes against Suk Mon Kong. Well, he couldn't have picked a tougher opponent than the Thai champion. You know, I, I don't think we're going to have a problem with uh, Ubeda putting a, a show on because uh, the Dutch would not send a boxer over here. They, they know how the Thais are and they certainly know Suk Mon Kong's reputation. So I think this boy is going to come out strong and, and really do his, do his job. Well, the Holland's had some many great fighters over the years. Raymond Decker remember a few times he's come out here he's really found some fine performances and let's see if Ubeda can uh, keep up to those same standards I mean looks like he's got those flashing roundhouse kicks to start proceedings off uh, now he goes grappling now uh, in terms of tactics uh, Sifu I'd be a little careful if I was Ubeda in going grappling against um, Sakmon Kong who's an extremely tough fighter yeah, I, I, I think that uh, Ubede is, is definitely fighting the Dutch style of fighting, which is um, probably closer to the Thai system than most European countries. He, uh, you can see they use a lot of the turning back kicks and very hard punching, and they come out very strong in the first round trying to impress people. And what they forget is that the referees and the judges aren't impressed in the first round. They normally sit back and make the distance. The Thais are happy when they do this. They're, they're tiring them out. That's true, and there's the pressure being applied now by Suk Mon Kong, forcing Ubeda onto the canvas with that strong grappling, and as well as a co oh, coach against the, the grappling. Oh, that's the turning back kick, a roundhouse kick. It's a real famous kick in Thailand. Not often seen now because not many people can do it, but uh, it was a perfect execution, although the timing was out and missed. Well, there's Ubeda now showing his style in grappling against Suk Mon Kong. Suk Mon Kong with the grappling irons on around the shoulders of the head of Ubeda. Ubeda now coming in with some wild punches. Uh, misses the mark by a good couple of centimetres at least. And now he's back in the centre of the ring. I did notice that Suk Mon Kong's doing a few charges now as he comes in with the, what's the vice-like grappling irons across the shoulder regions of Ubeda. Oh, there goes Ubeda. He's trying to come through with a straight. He's king-heading. He's, he's going, he's a headhunter. He's trying to get the one on. He thinks that he can take Suk Mon Kong out with a, with, a, with a one punch. I think he's making a bad mistake. And there's um, Suk Mon Kong using teeth push kicks now to keep Ubeda at bay. Ubeda looking a bit reckless now as he tries to look at the opportunity of charging in on the Suk Mon Kong. Well, there he Spins goes around. again. There he goes again. How effective is that uh, that reverse type kick he does? He, he takes his eyes. Oh, well there, it's off, a game. Uh, it's a game. He's going for. He's head hunting. But he takes his eyes right off the target area, which could be very dangerous against a fighter like Suk Mon Kong. Suk Mon Kong goes for the elbow now. Stands back from Ubeda. Ubeda from Holland, stalking now onto Suk Mon Kong. Suk Mon Kong uses the elbow one more time. Misses its mark. 
And there goes the bell to end the round. We'll pick up the slow motion here of Suk Wong Kong up against Ubadar. There's Ubadar swinging around. And there's the old right, elbow there. Right. Yeah. Missed its mark, fortunately it is, for Ubadar. You see that, that turning back kick there is uh, in Thai they call it Delake Fak Han, which means the, the crocodile swings its tail. It's a real famous kick here, but not many practitioners use it because it's dangerous. You have to be on the mark. And you do take your eyes off your, off your opponent too, which can be very dangerous, unless you really know what you're doing. There's Ubadar now. Gets in close. Sakmong Kong applying pressure, keeping him away. Sakmong Kong holding his ground now in the center of the ring. Elbow again. Good elbow. Elbow by Sakmong Kong, referee having a close look at him, but I thought he might have uh, been tough with that one, but uh, no damage so far. As the grappling irons go on, referee breaks. Now, why did the referee break that grapple? Well, there's, there's nowhere for it to go. They're both locked up. There's no way out. Um, it, it, it's slowing the, the pace of the fight down. And there's the pressure now by Sakmong Kong as he forces Ubadar onto the canvas. Up gets Ubadar, out goes Sakmong Kong into the grapple one more time. And then once again the referee instructing the fighters to break. And uh, Sakmong Kong stands in the center of the ring Sakmong and wants to go slugging. He's getting slugging. a distance now, he's getting a distance, look he's working on that stomach. What he's doing is he's going downstairs and he's going to fly upstairs in a minute, you watch. And now Sakmong Kong. With there those push kicks, finally gets in close, applies the grappling irons, pushes Ubadar onto the ropes. Referee sees the gloves touching the ropes and breaks the grapple. Out goes Suk Long Kong again. He's got his sights set on the solid roundhouse kick. The great lefties he's known applies that left roundhouse kick and uh, Ubadar now feeling the heat of Suk Long Kong. And uh, what would you be doing if you were Ubadar at the moment, Sifu? Would you well, keep, keep on trying to go clashing. grappling? I certainly wouldn't be there clashing. I'd be keeping my distance. I've got good long legs. I'd be using those legs and, and punching. Well, certainly. there we go. Sakman Kong's got a problem with his elbow. His elbow's dropped. He could be dislocating his shoulder yes, by yes. the looks of things. He's got a problem there. It's dropped. You can see it sticking out. And uh, Sakman Kong in big trouble. The referee's saying keep on fighting. He's not going to give any reprieve. And this is Ubadar's chance because obviously uh, Sakman Kong is suffering from that what appears to be a dislocated shoulder. Now he goes he into the grapple. He had a major problem, Patrick, uh, about two weeks before the fight at his training camp where he dislocated his shoulder doing a, in, a, in a fall while they were pumping. And uh, you can clearly see there it affected him and he was hurt. Well, how can he keep on going grappling with a dislocated shoulder? That shake takes a, a great amount of, uh, of pain-killing substance inside your brain to be able to stop that sort of uh, uh, situation. Yeah, but that, that, that doesn't that, stop uh, Sakmon Kong, though. That pain-killing substance is 100,000 people watching you. you well, know, if, if he loses this, it's like Thailand loses against Holland. They, they can't do that. He's got to show form. He's got to be there at his best. Sakmon Kong now fighting with pride. He's got a dislocated shoulder. But he's still staying in there. No reprieve from the referee. The referee now hears the bell sound and Ubadar goes over to his corner and Sakmon Kong no doubt gets some treatment for that shoulder and obviously looking very painful at the moment. Yeah, Patrick, with that slow motion replay there. That technique's the very same technique Lump Lumpon knocked out Raman Decker in Holland with. Raman Decker came with a turning back kick around uh, uh, Jalakia Fun Hack or Crocodile Kick and at the same time Lumpon kicked him with a crescent kick. And there's the slow motion of that dislocated shoulder of Sakmon Kong as he's breathing in agony there. Well, that must hurt, that must hurt. Well, I'd say that most fighters would probably call it quits after sort of dislocating your shoulder. It'd be very hard to continue on. But knowing the caliber, knowing the diamond heart of Sakmon Kong, I would say he'll keep on fighting. Yeah, I think, I think now the, the referee's unaware that it's actually dislocated. There's Mohamed Atasu, one of the promoters from Holland. Uh, he's brought some fighters across here for this fight as well. Well, look at the, the situation now with Sakmon Kong uh, being damaged with the Oh, there it is again, elbow. there it is again. You see that turning back kick he caught Sakmon Kong right on the jaw with that one. And, and he's coming Kong in, in hard. Sakmon Kong's now. He's hurt. Obviously, he's hurt. The effect of that dislocated shoulder, and he's been given the count down there. Oh, no, he's taking the count. One, his arms hurt, he can't fight back. He took that turning back kick right on the jaw. It staggered him a bit. And then uh, uh, the, the Dutch boy came flying in there. Look at him, he's opening up. 
Ubadar now realising that he has the chance of beating the great Thai champion Suk Mong Kong is full of confidence as he moves in on the Suk Mong Kong. Suk Mong Kong been given the count in the second round. That puts him right behind on points. And now Ubadar under pressure now as Suk Mong Kong shows his strength as he forces Ubadar on you know, the You know somebody now, Patrick, Suk Mong Kong's lost one of his weapons. He can't throw a straight punch now. That's his arm that's hurt. He has no backup punch. He's got to replace that by using his knee now and grappling. Well, after being uh, given the count by the referee, he's behind on points. He's been been damaged in the sense that he's not able to use his shoulder, and that restricts his weapon. What would you do if you're Suk Mong Kong right now? I'd be using those powerful leg kicks and working on uh, on the Dutchman's legs because the Dutchman's never come across a boxer of this caliber before, and I think I'd wear him down. I'd try and wear him down on the legs and giving me a bit of space so he doesn't come in and clinch. And there's Suk Mong Kong using, favouring his right fist now. He can't really use his left. And also there he is getting in close with the roundhouse kick, firing in the knees. And Suk Mong Kong called the great lefty, mainly because of the fact that he throws that sweeping, hard-driving roundhouse kick, usually aimed at the thighs or the ribcage, and no doubt he'll be using that weapon as his fight continues. There goes Suk Mong Kong, favouring that, uh, that, 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 that shoulder all the time. He's really got no power that left anymore. You can see when he clinches, he can't even he can't even hold at the back. Look at it, look at it, it's just hanging there. It's been confined to his kicks. And there he goes in with the grapple. And on, on goes the knee strike look, look, he gets the opportunity. It. It's, limp there. it's really affecting him. And I, I think I think the Dutch boy knows this. He's he, he senses this and he's starting to come in real strong now. He's trying to close the gap up there, I think, Patrick. Ubada. Oh, there's another elbow and another got a one. Chance. Gets in close to Suk Mong Kong and Suk Mong Kong just pushes him away. Great tenacity by Suk Mong Kong to stay in the ring. Obviously hurt badly by his elbow, but that, that shoulder, should I say. And now you see the way Suk Mong Kong is getting down Whoa. to business now. The with hard he's right back. punches. Oh. Down goes Ubada. He's going to get a count. It's Certainly. Bring it back equal now. They're going to come back equal. That was a very hard right hand thrown by Suk Mong Kong. And Ubadar has now been given the full count. Obviously that, that hard punch of Suk Mong Kong landed with the right arm uh, because his left has been maimed by a dislocated... There's that turning back kick that hit him. That got him right on the jaw there. Did you see that? He's thrown that kick a couple of times. And that time he did connect. And this is where Suk Mong Kong got the count. There's the referee walking in. Now, why did the referee give him a, a, a technical uh, count there? Was uh, Suk Mong Kong protested? Because uh, I, I know, Suk Mong Kong never fought back and he didn't have his guard up, mainly because I don't think he could lift his arm. Yes, he was, uh, he was upset and, about uh, that, that call though, and then he came back twice as hard and then he knocks down Ubadar with that right hand punch and uh, that's all he's got really left at the moment, his, his punches, and his right hand punch and he of course his, uh, his knees and, uh, and kicks. Now, he's scared, he's scared Ubadar now, Ubadar's scared. Yes, well certainly. Ubadar has realised he's felt the fury of Suk Mong Kong now and I think that he's scared. You look at him, he's trying to lock on now and keep out of that power range of Suk Mong Kong. Suk Mong Kong. Now, realising that he wants to finish off the fight early if he can, he's got a dislocated shoulder, he's popped out a couple of times in this contest. In he goes, half of the knee strike. Those flying knees of Suk Mong Kong really are first class. I'd say there's no greater fighter in Muay Thai at the moment that can execute those knee strikes as well as Suk Mong Kong. Well, he's certainly one of the hardest. Look at him, he's, he's clinching in there. He's having a problem with that arm holding. He can't push them out. So he uh, tries to break it up using his elbows. The left one on the line and the rest of the ring is still great. There's Suk Mong Kong using the roundhouse kick, the left roundhouse kick. He likes to favour the left kick. Then he gets into grappling. Referee has a look and says, stalemate and breaks the grapple. Suk Mong Kong, the great lefty, in damaged here with his dislocated shoulder. Head high kick again by Ubadar. Oh, there's another elbow. He's coming across. Oh, there's a turning back elbow by Ubadar. It didn't hit, but if it did, oh. Ubadar now puts the grapple back on to Suk Mong Kong. Suk Mong Kong stands back. Then comes in with a left roundhouse kick, charges him with a knee, and he pins Ubadar into the corner. Ubadar's now, got a bad cut there over his hip. It's quite a wide cut. It's not bleeding, but it must be hurting him because he's catching a lot of punches here on the face. Well, Suk Mong Kong may be wounded with that recurring 
uh, shoulder injury with a dislocated shoulder, but he certainly is putting a lot of pressure on Ubadar at the moment. Ubadar under pressure by one of the great champions of all time in Muay Thai, Sakmon Kong. He's winged, he's wounded, but he's fighting hard. He's starting, they're starting to tire. Both boxes are tiring here. Sakmon Kong's trying to really wear him down by coming in with an attack and then locking up on him. So there's the strength there of Sakmon Kong. You see that strength there again, Super, the way in which he just pushes down Ubadar as if Ubadar wasn't even there. But there's, oh, there's a solid there's, punch there's by Ubadar. There's a, a right hand there. Caught Sakmon Kong right on the jaw. Probably the other fighter would have been down by that sort of punch, but uh, Sakmon Kong just took it in his stride. Now Sakmon Kong standing back from Ubadar. Ubadar comes in hard. There's another elbow there. Into the grapple they go again. You can see, look, look, Sakmon Kong can't lock up. I think the referee's aware of it and uh, because uh, you can see that Sakmon Kong can't lock on the clinching because of his hand. What can the referee do though? Could, could he stop the fight because of this location or would he allow no, it to keep on going? No, the boxer's corner should throw the towel in or the doctor, but it's obvious that Sakmon Kong can continue uh, to a certain extent, so therefore I don't think they'll stop the fight. In terms of the point scoring now, both fighters have been given knockdowns against um, each other because of those punches, so it would be very even now as we go towards the end of the third. Yeah, I, I, I see someone more coming up here. There's that knee strike again. That was a perfect execution. He must have landed that oh. flying knee five or six times in this contest. Now Sakmon Kong takes another strong punch by Ubadar. Ubadar not giving up. He comes in, but there comes Sakmon Kong back in hard. Fires in the elbow that misses. Well, Patrick, this is truly electrifying. Look at these people. There's a hundred, over a hundred thousand people here to look at these boxes. And I'd say that every one of them would be a fan of Sakmon Kong. He really is one of the great champions of Muay Thai. Sakmon Kong is one of the hardest pickers that I have ever seen. I've been here over 10 years been involved with Muay Thai. There's, there's a sample there. He kicked him once and, and he can't continue. He's got to get a standing eight count. Well, that now puts Sakmon Kong well and truly in the box position. It's over. It's over, it's isn't over. it? He gave up. Well, he's, he's given up. Well, Sakmon Kong, despite the kick. fact that he's been had a dislocated shoulder popped out five times, I count in that contest. Sakmon Kong's broken his arm. He broke. He broke the Holland man's arm. He broke uh, Perry's arm. Well, the cameras were in long range. Let's pick up the slow Perry's motion. There. It was a hell of a kick. That kick of uh, Sakmon Kong. Look, well, watch it again. Continue. One more comes. There's Sakmon Kong. There again. There was two kicks fired in on the uh, shoulder region. It just goes to show you the power of that kick that Sakmon Kong executed there. You think the pain Sakmon Kong went through in that fight, and now, now the pain this Dutch boy must be going through to actually stop the fight. Maybe he's broken his arm, or although maybe with just the power of those roundhouse kicks of Sakmon Kong has stopped yet another fighter. Not the first time that Sakmon Kong has stopped a top-class fighter.